Ebenezer family and friends, it is so good to be back with you today. I'm, I'm thinking about the Word, and I, I'm telling you, it's going to be a blessing to you as we are concluding this series on the Holy Spirit and just His transformative power on the inside of us. just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for reaching out to one another, praying for one another, just all that you do, especially in these changing times. Uh, we're now under another mask mandate, and uh, I'm telling you, for the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, and this Delta variant is uh, arising and really hitting families hard. But you know what? God is faithful, and I want you to be encouraged. Thank you for staying connected to ebcnc.com. We've got so much that's going on there, uh, whether it's our Monday night Bible studies or special events, Tuesday noonday Bible study, Wednesday Bible study, our 845 in-person services, 1045 uh, in-person services, and 10 o'clock online. Just a lot of ways to stay connected. We need to be encouraged in these days and times. Thank you for your giving. Um, God has just blessed us. He has really taught us how to be cheerful givers, whether you're giving via our app or ebcnc.com or sending it to our secure mailbox or giving in the in-person services. We thank you. Thank you so much. And I pray and know that you have been blessed even in this season of so many things going on. Well, without further ado, I'm going to ask one of our ministers to give us a scripture. And then I'm going to ask another one of our ministers uh, to give us a prayer. See you soon. This morning, our scripture lesson is coming from St. John chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters the door, enters by the door, is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. I have read chapter, uh, verses 1 through 5 of John chapter 10. Thank you. Let us bow our head. Our Father, our Father, thank you for the message and the word that you have sent through your servant. Thank you for what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. Oh Lord, we thank you that we're still able to say thank you. We ask, oh God, now that you would remember those who had a desire to be here but were unable. And we thank you, oh God, for all of those who were you blessed that they could be here on this special occasion. Father, we ask that you would remember not only us that are here, but those who were not able to be here at this day. As we move forward in life, please, Father, have mercy upon those who are careless and unconcerned that they might lift up their voice, yes. lift up their eyes, lift up their head, and see you through the Spirit. Bless now our news carrier, our pastor, as he continues to share the good news with us. Bless us and keep us blessed. Every family, every member, every visitor, every friend that has come this way today. And guide us and keep us. And we ask this in Jesus and through Jesus Christ, we ask it. Amen, amen. and amen. God has a way. 
that's mighty sweet. Just lay your burdens down at his feet. He knows the road. He'll bear your love. God has a way. In the midnight hour, he's mighty sweet. Just lay your burdens down at his feet. He knows the road. He'll bear your love. God has a way. When trouble comes, he's mighty sweet. Just lay your burdens down at his feet. He knows the road. He'll bear your love. God has a way. God has a way. That's mighty sweet. Just lay your burdens down at his feet. He knows the road. He'll bear your love. God has a way. That's mighty sweet. It is so good to be saved and delivered and um, covered by the blood of Jesus. And uh, today as we uh, get back into the message, I am just, I pray that today you're really blessed as we think uh, more intensively on the Holy Spirit. And uh, remember that theological term uh, that we've been talking about, this is your time to kind of chime in. Mm, give me a little time. Yes, pneumatology. Uh, that's what we've been uh, studying. Uh, the breath of life, uh, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that He's given us as a gift. I remember that Genesis 1 and 2 has been our uh, topic scripture. We've been really focusing on that second uh, verse. says, And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And that shows the creative Spirit of God that's actually working on the inside of us. And we're just going to get back into it today. And I'm telling you, um, God has done a wonderful work to redeem uh, mankind. Uh, today's scripture I want to focus on is 1 John 4.4 4, as we're dealing with the power of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit. 1 John 4.4. 4. It reads, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Isn't that some shouting? That's a shouting scripture right there. I'm going to read it again. First John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. I want to speak from a, a subject today. He is the greatest. He is the greatest. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day that you've made. Um, Lord, thank you for the ability that you put in us uh, via your spirit to rejoice and be glad in it. Now, Lord, I just pray for those who are viewing, listening in, Lord, and I uh, just ask you if there's anyone that's not saved, that today be their day, that they'll confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you've raised them from the dead and you said they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. Help them to receive that gift today, Lord. Thank you so much for that. Lord, now I ask you to move me out of the way. Uh, would you forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness? Therefore, we're teaching about you, Holy Spirit. Would you teach us and guide us and lead us into all truth? Please make this word so plain, so easy to be understood. 
that even a small child can be transformed to be like you. Thank you, God, again, for the wonderful work that you're doing in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, one of the uh, extraordinary uh, boxers, fighters of all time, he made this statement. He says, I am the greatest. I said that even before I knew I was. And I, just astronomical statement uh, to make. But even in his um, a wonderful boxing career, please know he's not the greatest. Uh, we're going to talk about the greatest today and what he's done uh, in our lives and what he is actually still doing uh, via the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's do a little review. We were in 1 John 3.24 on uh, last Sunday. Uh, now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. And that title was he abides in me. Just some points in review. Uh, Holy Spirit sacrifice, cold hearts, the spirit and the heart how to walk in confidence. Remember that, the confidence of the Lord. The Spirit helps us to please the Father and the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the time frame of First John is around uh, 90 AD. Um, John, as he writes this, he is he's this elderly father that's writing to his children, and he is really opening up his heart to encourage them in the walk of the faith. Uh, so many falsities have come in, false teachers, we're going to talk about that, and actually different spirits that were attacking the church. And uh, John had to encourage them, stay close to the true Holy Spirit. Uh, as he's advanced in years, he has learned to grow more and more in the Father. And, and that's what it's all about. That's what this teaching has been about, that we can become more sensitive uh, to the Holy Spirit, that gift that God has given us. And uh, we can lean strongly and realize, understand that as we're leaning strongly on God's presence, that He is ordering our steps. And we, we can realize that there is a purpose in our lives, that God can use us in this dark world uh, to be lights. Let's jump into the section. First John 4.1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Our first point, there are many spirits in the world. There are many spirits in the world. Uh, in our introduction, talking with John, he, this was a concern. This was a, an attack upon uh, the church. The enemy was coming strong. And we, we realized that there are demonic spirits. It says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of darkness in high places. This is what was happening and coming against uh, the church. Uh, William McDonald, he gives us this uh, wonderful summary of the really context of this particular scripture. It says, having mentioned the Holy Spirit, John is reminded that there are other spirits abroad in the world today and that the children of God need to be warned against them. Thus, he cautions the believer not to trust every spirit. Amen. Uh, the word spirit here probably refers primarily to teachers, but not exclusively so. Just because a man speaks about the Bible, God, and Jesus does not mean that he is a true child of God. We're to test the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. These are people who profess, listen to this, to accept Christianity, but teach another gospel all together. Wow. Um, this saddens me when I, I think about this because it is so, so true. As we are living in the last days, I can see the enemy stepping up so strong and attacking our establishments, those things that uh, we felt that we can trust. Uh, in our society now, there seems to be a, a movement, and I, I taught on this some months ago, the spirit of the Antichrist, that people would rather uh, believe a lie uh, than the truth of God. Uh, pastors like uh, Jim Jones, who physically uh, poisoned some 918 men, women, and children. And um, please understand, um, there are, there are pastors now that may not be physically doing this, murdering people, but poisoning the spirits, uh, bringing people under subjections of things that are not of the Lord, and allowing uh, demonic spirits into the very presence of the saints of God. Yes, let me show you something. Second Corinthians 11:13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no wonder, 
for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so glad God is the greatest. Please understand the enemy loves to imitate or at least try to imitate what God does, but he flips it on the other side. He's kind of the 180 degrees and, and he is trying to get the child of God off the path that God has called them in. And so he will attack the church. He has attacked the church and he is attacking the church. Second Corinthians eleven fifteen says, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. Aren't you glad for the Holy spirit that he is the greatest the father has done so much in our lives to keep us focused on him look at this next scripture first john 4 2 and 3 it says by this you know the spirit of god that's capital s every spirit that confesses that jesus christ has come in the flesh is of god and every spirit that does not confess that jesus christ has come in the flesh is not of god and this is the spirit of the antichrist which you have heard was coming and it is now now already in the world. Wow, that's heavy. A lot to that. Here's another point. Your confession is shown by how you live. Your confession is shown by how you live. I'm going to say that again because this is heavy. This is the embodiment, what the, the Spirit of God, He's the greatest, is doing in us. Your confession is shown by how you live. Uh, Jesus brought this out in such a uh, vivid imagery to show us that uh, what we are does come out. In Luke 6, 43, it says, For a good tree does not not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. And this is so important. So we see this. Uh, Jesus himself is saying that the tree, whatever that tree is, it's going to show the type of fruit uh, that it is. Luke 6 45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil, for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. The, the true Spirit of God acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in the flesh and walked among men, was crucified on the cross of Calvary, died on the cross of Calvary, and got up on the third day with all power and all glory in the flesh, and is now seated on the right hand of the Father and will come back. He sits on the right hand interceding for us but I am so glad that one day he's coming back on a cloud where every eye can see him he is the greatest even when Jesus came uh, back or got up from the dead and walked amongst his disciples uh, there were some questions there were some questions that that maybe he was just an embodied uh, spirit a, a lowercase spirit that was just walking around let me show you Luke 24 and 36 now as they said these things Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit, that lowercase there. I am so glad that God is the greatest because he's given us the capital S spirit of God that dwells on the inside of us to direct and given us a Jesus that is not a ghost, but he's the real thing. Let me show you something else. Luke 24, 38. And he said to them, Jesus said, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Man, he wanted to solidify and let them know he was the real deal because this is the gospel. And John's uh, church, as he was preaching and ministering to them, there were people that were bringing contrary things that were trying to steer uh, the people away from the true Jesus Christ and his holiness. Luke 24, 40 and 43, Jesus wanted to make sure they understood who he was. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb and he took it and ate 
in their presence. Our Savior is alive and well and he is coming back and he's given us a gift of the Holy Spirit to direct us and guide us that we no longer have to lean and, and live by our flesh, but we can live by the Spirit. That is good news. Romans 8 34 says, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Aren't you glad for a God that is praying for us. He is the greatest. Look at 1 John 4, 4 and 5. I love this. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. There ought to be some shouts out there. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world and the world hears them. He is the greatest. Here's another point. We have overcome. Yes, yes, you can put in the, the chat, overcome, overcome. We have overcome overcome. I know it's tough and I, I know there's struggles and I know uh, our flesh tries to rise up and we've been we've been dealing with that and trying to discern between what is God and what is the, of the enemy. Uh, the context of this particular scripture and section is actually talking about false teaching. How, how many times have we succumbed to uh, fly-by-night teachings that, you know what, just emotionalized us, made us excited, but it really did not build the foundation. We found ourselves just doing stuff, but yet it wasn't transformative in our lives. First Timothy 4, 1 and 2 brings out something very powerful. It says, now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, that's the capital S, in the latter times, I believe we're in the latter times, it says some will depart from the faith, giving heed to, listen to me, deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Saints, I am seeing the spirit of the Antichrist hit the church of God. I am seeing uh, saints that are uh, confused and getting caught up in a political system and raising that higher than the cross of Calvary and what Jesus has done. But I want you to know we have God's spirit dwelling on the inside of us and God is directing us and ordering our steps. He is the greatest and we can never lose sight. We cannot allow the enemy to trip up the ought to be some hallelujah trip us up we have to stay focused on God's word and we've got to give true praise to our God how do we stay away from them this is the question uh, we, we've got to lean more strongly on God's spirit we've got to stay in the word we've got to pray without ceasing we've got to fast we've got to say God I, I understand uh, what you're doing in my life and and I submit more to it and we've got to trust him we really got to give our whole heart soul mind and strength to him. Proverbs 14, 12. Listen to this. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Oh, God is the greatest saints of God, we have to realize that God gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we would not walk in darkness and find ourselves off in a ditch. He, he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit because he knew the enemy was going to step up his attack. He knew the enemy would try to attack our minds, but thank God for the powerful, awesome spirit that dwells on the inside of the believers. Look at 1 John 4, 6. We are of God. Yes, yes, you got to repeat that to yourself. We are of God. The believers, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of of error. Can I read that again for you? Because this, this is heavy. He is the greatest. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Here's another point. Truth and error. Truth and error. I just brought up, there is a struggle in our society on what is truth and what is error. We, we, we've, we've got all these things that are out there in a, in a day and time where we can Google stuff, you know, we can Bing stuff, we can Yahoo stuff, or we can do all of these searches to get information. We've got Wikipedia pages. We've got all of these facts and figures. It seems that there is a problem with grasping what is truth and what is error. 
and that's why I am so excited for God's 66 books, his word of God for the believer, because we know what truth is. We can discern what error is. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. And Jesus was concerned that he knew that fiery trials was going to come upon the saints of God, that we were going to go through. And that's why the gift of the Holy Spirit is so important. He is the greatest. Uh, things that would be concocted by the enemy to get us off track, as said before. And so Jesus teaches something very powerful to the apostles that we can apply to our lives in John 14, 25. He says, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. He is the greatest. We've been given this wonderful, wonderful teacher and guide to help us to discern between what is truth and what's error. He is the greatest. Look at 1 John 4, 7 through 9. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here's another point. Agape. Yes. Agape. When we understand the greatness of God and what he is doing on the inside of us, we can't help but love. In all these years of counseling, I, I have come upon a, a big issue that families can be falling apart because of a lack of love, not understanding what agape love is all about. Agape means that I'm going to love you even when you don't deserve love. There ought to be some hallelujahs there. That's what God did for us. He loved us first, even when we were loveless and, and we did not care. We were mean and ugly. God sent his only begotten son uh, to die on a cross of Calvary for us to show his love, that agape. The spirit is emphatic about this in 1 John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. Yes, that is such good news to know that he is the greatest, that he reached out and he embraced us and he called us his beloved. He called us his children and he gave us a way to be brought out of the darkness into the marvelous light that we can live with him forever and more. Isn't that good news? Hallelujah. Can we really grasp the fact that God loves us in spite of ourselves? Are there some folks that have messed up out there? Are there some folks that have had issues in your life and you fail, but aren't you glad God is a forgiving God? He still loves you. He still cares for you. And the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us, even though we have grieved the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad that he hasn't left us, but he is still changing us from the inside out? We fail him, but he loves us. We make mistakes, but he loves us. We go astray, but he loves us. This is the God that loves us so much. He is the greatest. Luke 23, 34. Then Jesus said, Father, remember on that cross, forgive them for they do not won't know what they do and they divided his garments and cast his lot. This is Jesus showing his love for us and what God has gone to the nth degree to save us. Jesus is the key to it all. He's the greatest. The Father has gifted us the package of the Holy Spirit via the finished work of the cross what his son did for us. John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life John 3 17 for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved he is the greatest oh what he's done is so wonderful to understand look at this closely first John 4 9 that second part that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him oh wow in order to live through him, we find out that the spirit of God, Jesus has come. He's delivered us, set us free on that cross of Calvary. We're going to talk about the cross over and over again. He got up on that third day with all power and he gave us the Holy Spirit that we can live in him, that we can walk in him, that we can be more like the, the father. The spirit enables us to live in Christ. Let's not forget Galatians 5, 24 and 25. And those who are Christ 
have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. That's what it's all about. Learning about the Holy Spirit and how he interacts with the believer that we can walk in him on a daily basis. Look at 1 John 4, 10 and 11. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Yes, now, now there's a process that's happening when we, once we understand he's the greatest. Here's another point, love in action. Yes, love in action. There's so many people, and we talked about this on last Sunday, that have tongue action. Uh, they, they talk a lot, but they don't actually put it into uh, interaction. They don't actually physically walk and do something with what they said. Uh, Spurgeon, uh, he writes something very powerful. He says, some Christians try to go to heaven alone in solitude, but believers are not compared to the bears or lions or other animals that wander alone. Those who belong to Christ are sheep in this respect, that they love to get together. Sheep go in flocks and do so, or, or so do God's people. Isn't that good? He is the greatest. God has done something spectacular because of his spirit that's on the inside. It draws us together as believers. Yes, that's why it's so important. Uh, the connection that God has given us through the local body and also the entirety of his body of believers, whether we're a uh, Methodist or Presbyterian or Baptist, we've got a whole fourth that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's given us the Holy Spirit and it's like magnets. We are drawn together. We want to be be amongst the believers, those who are true in God, simply because God is love and he draws us together. He is the greatest. Let's look at these final section of scriptures of the day. First John 4, 12. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in him. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. Don't you love that? And he abides, who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Yes, I love those scriptures. Here's the final point. Holy Spirit connection. Holy Spirit connection connection. He is the greatest. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, 1 John 4, 12 is actually a, a quote of John, St. John 1 and 18. It says, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. Notice that how scripture actually defines scripture. And we see so many times the same scriptures coming over and over again. In essence, the only way we get to experience the father, uh, God, is through, we said this, through Christ and what he's done for us via the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we truly can uh, abide in the Lord via his Holy Spirit as we give ourselves more and more. We understand our flesh and we crucify that flesh daily and we decide within ourselves, God, you are everything. God, I want to follow you. And we decide that we're going to get in his word more. We're going to pray more. We're going to seek his face. And then we can truly become what God has called us in Second. Corinthians 5 20 and 21 now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteous of God in him he is the greatest our God Jesus the Christ the anointed died on the cross of Calvary nails in his hands and nails in his feet carrying our sins and bearing our griefs and they put him in a cold tomb after he had given up the ghost, but I am so glad to tell you that three days later, he gets up with all power and all glory in the flesh, and he gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit to dwell on the inside of us. He is the greatest so that we can have victory in this world, and we can say we have overcome the enemy, and we can celebrate God in the good times as well as the bad times. I don't know what you're going through today, but I'm telling you, we have such a specialness on the inside 
inside of us. And when we think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us, our souls to shout out hallelujah. Thank God for saving us. He is the greatest. Yes, he is the greatest. That wonderful God that has done so much from Genesis chapter 1 to where we are presently in our lives to save us, to deliver us, to help us to walk in the righteousness of Him, to know that He is deserving of all praise, honor, and glory. If you don't know Him today, I pray that today these scriptures have got into your heart and your mind. And please, you, you can't even accept God without the Holy Spirit. So right now, if your heart's been pricked, would you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead? The scriptures say you will be saved. It's by grace through faith and not of yourself. It's a gift of God. Receive that gift today. Oh, that God can dwell on the inside of you via the Holy Spirit. He is the greatest. For the saints that are saved and delivered, I pray that you have been encouraged today to walk more in God, to learn more about the Holy Spirit to stay focused on God's will and purpose for your life. This is a wonderful time, even as we see the spirit of the Antichrist, even as we see demonic demons coming from all uh, sides of us and the front, back, left, and trying to confuse people. This is a great time because we have God. Yes, we've got his word. Then we can discern between truth and error. We have overcome. Isn't that good news today? to know we are ambassadors for Christ. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for this word. I'm excited, thank you for this word. Thank you for your spirit. Lord, again, please forgive us. We have failed so many times. We've grieved you so many times, but thank you for your finished work. Thank you for the completeness of it, Lord. Thank you for not forgetting anything in the plan for us, Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you for dwelling inside of the believer. Thank you for transforming us to make us more like the Father, more like Christ. Lord, we glorify you that as we go through this world, Lord, we'll be used, our purposes will be fulfilled, that more souls will be saved and brought to the knowledge of the truth of you. Thank you, Lord, that you are the greatest. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting. To be where you are I'll cross the hardest desert Travel near or far For your glory I will do anything Just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are I'll cross the hardest desert travel near or far for your glory 
I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king for your glory. I will do anything just to see you. To behold you as my king, I want to be where you are. I've got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. I've got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I've gotta be where you are. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you. To behold you as my king, for your glory, I will do anything just to see you, mm. to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are.